I couldn't imagine being picked up from where I was and being put in some cage, a cell, and not being able to speak the same language. No wonder they're terrified. How could you not be terrified? Animals end up at the Humane Society uh, for various reasons. They may be stray. Um, sometimes people actually um, let their animals go and release them because um, they can't take care of them. It could be a money issue. So they end up coming in stray, either from our animal control officers picking them up or a concerned citizen um, in the community lets us know. A lot of the times, well, we don't know where they came from or what kind of situation they came from. Um, oftentimes, they are a bit nervous or fearful. Um, they may not have been in the best situations prior to now. Um, so it does take a lot of time to get to know the animal and have them comfortable with us. We have a dog named Ernie. And uh, Ernie's been adopted three times and brought back. And uh, Ernie looks like an absolute angel when you see the pictures. And he is, really. He's great with children and he's not afraid with, of people in wheelchairs and he likes seniors and he likes to walk, he just likes to be outside. Um, but when you adopt him out and you put him in a home, he has some pretty bad behaviors. <laughs> One of them being he pooped on a guy's laptop and uh, he destroyed a couch, <laughs> okay? So we didn't realize this when we adopted him out because everything else was, was good. and. Uh, then another person wanted to adopt them, and uh, I basically told them the truth of the dog. This is what he does, he can't be an indoor dog, and they still wanted to take him on. But after he ate a couple of buttons and ate the guy's sweater and the carpet, and then threw up in the vehicle, he came back. You know, I had a hard decision to make, and then along came Karen Laws and offered to do training with him. So that's what we've done. Uh, we just wanted to do a little bit more and unfortunately, um, sometimes we can't, but in this situation, we could. We can never do enough, right? The staff members are really great. We take the animals out. We try to socialize them as much as possible. We'll put them in foster homes if we need to, just to make them more comfortable and get them ready to be adopted into their forever home. For the most part, it's very rewarding. Sometimes it can be pretty stressful. I've seen some pretty severe hoarding cases uh, where Places are offering as a cat rescue, and they're bringing in cats and cats when they have no money to take care of them in the first place. Um, so you get to the point where you have a small house with over 100 cats in it, and it just gets too much to handle, and it gets overwhelming for people and the cats as well. And if the veterinarian signs off on the removal, then we're able to remove the animals. And there was one little kitten, and his name was Fergus. He was the only one that made it from his group of siblings. And he had the sorest bum I've ever seen on a cat in my life. And I took a liking to this guy. And uh, I decided instead of having to put him down, I took him home um, with me. And uh, myself and my partner uh, fell in love with the little guy. And uh, there was no way I was allowed to bring him back. So Fergus is now part of my home. So sore bum kitty now rules the roost at my house. So we look after everything from cats to parrots to sheep, you name it, we'll look after it. We don't get a lot of reptiles, but we do, we've had birds, we've had, um, we've had goats here, we've had pigs, um, haven't actually had horses, but we have dealt with horses. The horse case is pretty, pretty terrible. The owner was feeding his dog's horse meat. And we actually have pictures of the dogs eating deceased horses. And it's actually quite horrifying um, to see that. And then there's this one horse. When you look at the pictures from the before and after shot, it's quite shocking. She's emaciated. She's got no body mass to her. She's in pretty bad shape. And her mane or her tail are just one solid mat. And the first thing I think about when I look at this horse is how long has this been going on for? And imagine how long that horse has had to suffer like that for. When you have an animal come in that's been abused, uh, 
neglected. You try to let it go and you try to understand, but it doesn't make it okay. But then you get little guys like this and they make it all better. <laughs> we rely on money from the community. It's all about the community, uh, whether it's individuals, um, corporations, businesses. These are individuals that really have the same philosophy as we do. They love the animals, they want to help, um, and that's how the money comes in. And if anyone out there wants to make a donation towards the, the health of animals, there's a special area where that money goes. It's called the Milo Fund. Uh, we access it for emergency medical care for animals um, in our care at the Society. It came about years ago because a little terrier was severely injured and unfortunately we didn't have the cash um, to have it fixed at the vet. So we put an ask out to the community indicated that this animal needed serious surgery and the community came forward and we were able to pay for the animal's um, care through that fund. So we've just continued it over the years. So when an emergency situation, um, for example, Grace comes, comes aboard, we can access the Milo Fund in order to make sure that animal gets the care it needs. I love to talk about Amazing Grace. Uh, this is a dog that uh, was found roaming on the streets. Not only did this poor animal have mange, which has to be the most irritating and painful thing that can happen to an animal from head to toe, but she also needed entropian surgery. Um, meaning that her eyelashes were turned inside out. So they basically grow into the eyeball and are quite painful. So what we did is we did an ask to the public and uh, it, went, it just went wild. It was amazing. It was such a, a feel-good thing to happen for us here. And we were receiving donations from, of course, the Peterborough community, um, from the U.S., um, across Ontario, across Canada. Um, everyone wanted to help Grace and it was just a really um, amazing thing to happen. It is pretty fabulous actually. But there are some pretty sad days too that, you know, a lot of the public don't get to see but sometimes we have to euthanize. Um, and you do get attached even though you understand the circumstances. When you mention euthanization, um, people get really frightened and scared or um, Sometimes a little aggressive <laughs> towards the humane societies when we have to place animals down. Um, we never take uh, putting an animal down lightly. It is a humane thing to do, but sometimes you just really don't want to, you know, but you have to. So that can be very upsetting. You just, you just have, to, you have to do the right thing, and sometimes euthanizing is the right thing. At your feet you'll find me curled We need donors, obviously. Shelters need fosters. We always need volunteers. The public can help by picking up the phone and calling 310 SPCA if they have any animal cruelty or neglect concerns. We just need the community to realize that um, we're here for the animals and we're here to give animals second chances. At your feet you'll find me curl. My master is my whole world. I need love, lots of love for life. With your love and kindness, I'll be your friend for life.